you from? Uh, from Canada. Yes. Yeah, Canada. Vancouver. You know Vancouver? Vancouver. But against the common assumption about robots, they're actually creating jobs for people instead of taking them away. Hopping on both feet is a major advancement, and Osimo has been further developed. Number five, musculoskeletal robot. Tokyo Tech researchers are working on creating the Ghost in the Shell universe of 2029, which includes cyber brains, walking tanks, and prosthetic bodies. The Suzumori Endo Lab of the School of Engineering received the 2016 Ghost in the Shell Realized Project Award in the robotics category for their flexible artificial muscle. The award ceremony took place at Anime Japan 2017, the world's largest animation convention. At the time, R&D experts at companies and universities, public institutions, and the Ghost in the Shell production committee formed an industry academia body and launched the Ghost in the Shell Realized project to pursue the realization of near-future technologies depicted in the acclaimed animated series. Japanese technologies, most closely resembling those used by the mobile armored riot police, were selected from creations introduced on the project's website and SNS pages between April 2016 and February 2017. Research on thin, flexible artificial muscles by Professor Koichi Suzumori and his team has been highly evaluated. Based on the results of this research, S Muscle Co. Limited, a venture company originating from Tokyo Tech and Okayama University, was founded in 2016. The company utilizes weaving and bundling of artificial muscle fibers, creating various forms of muscle that can be widely utilized, such as support suits and corsets. The company also anticipates use in new robots and assistive equipment in direct contact with humans. Number 4. Orihime D or Orem. The proposed robot Orihime D can be operated remotely by disabled people, providing an alternative to traditional telework robots. The robot can communicate with real speech sound and speech synthesis, enabling communication for those with difficulty speaking while still unable to engage in physical work. With the robot and tablet, she is able to participate, taking part in rhythm exercises and more. But against the common assumption about robots, they're actually creating jobs for people instead of taking them away. The concept of demi-robot or demi-agent is similar to the Wizard of Oz or WOZ concept where the character or personality of each operator is important in the same manner as the human-human interaction. In this case, the avatar robot is considered an alter ego of the human operator and a robot with a different appearance from human at the same time. As the number of people with physical disabilities or bedridden people increases due to increasing life expectancy, it's essential to develop technologies that extend the abilities of bedridden people and enable social participation. The Orihime D is an avatar robot designed to enable disabled individuals to engage in physical work. It has moving functions, robotic hands, and communication functions, allowing operators to operate interactive telework involving physical work such as carrying things or serving customers remotely. The Orihime D's appearance is based on the average height of a six-year-old child, and its head and chest have two degrees of freedom. The head has a fisheye camera and microphone, and a speaker on the chest. Where are you from? Uh, from Canada. Yeah. Yeah, Canada. Vancouver. You know Vancouver? Vancouver. For example, the people in the hospital, he or she is bedridden. The arm has six degrees of freedom and seven motions for the head and arms. The robot has two omni wheels with motors for locomotion and a line tracing function for long distance movement. The system configuration includes two input methods, a mouse operation and a line of sight input device called Orihime Eye. The operator can remotely confirm their surroundings from the video transmitted from the camera on the head and the voice of interactors and ambient sound is transmitted to the operator through the microphone on the forehead. A graphical user interface is prepared for the operator, allowing them to communicate with the interlocutor by speech and selecting the prepared motions. Number 3. Archer's Air Taxi Midnight 
Archer, a leading manufacturer of electric air taxis or EV tolls, is making steady progress in its mission to get fully certified electric air taxis into commercial service by 2025. The Midnight Air Taxi has completed the first phase of flight testing and is expected to fly with human pilots on board this year. The company is currently in fifth place on the AAM Reality Index and has signed deals with Atlantic Aviation and NASA to develop ground-based infrastructure in California, Florida, and New York City. The Beeline Moto 2 is available in polymer aluminum or all aluminum body choices. The Midnight prototypes have been flying since late October, albeit only in standard multi-rotor mode. The team has now validated the airframe's ability to take off, hover, turn and maneuver like a multi-rotor drone tilting to accelerate. The next step is to demonstrate the transition from hover to cruise modes, tilting its front six propellers forward and accelerating into the efficient wing-borne airplane mode that will allow it to fly up to 100 miles or 160 kilometers between battery top-ups at speeds up to 150 miles or 241 kilometers an hour. Archer plans to have human pilots on board within the year and begin the rigorous process of four-credit flight testing with the FAA moving down the path towards a type certificate that will allow these next-gen aircraft to start taking paid passengers. They're still targeting 2025 for full certification and entry into service, along with Joby Aviation and Beta Technologies. It's happening, folks. The quiet, cheap electric air taxis are almost upon us. Clearly, they work. But will they transform urban life the way people expect them to, particularly now that working from home is becoming a well-entrenched option and plenty of folk don't need to sit in traffic all morning and evening? We look forward to finding out. Number 2. Handleless Wireless Umbrella Drone The content creator behind I Build Stuff created a flying umbrella that flies above the user's head and follows them around using a controller to shield them from the rain. The flying umbrella is packed with electronics and 3D printed parts, making it not only hover in the air, but also zip through the skies, continuously guarding the user from getting wet in the rain. The creator assembled a cross-like construction made of 3D printed parts that poke out of the umbrella, with each end featuring a small propeller rotating like a hurricane, lifting up the umbrella. These tubes are made of carbon fiber to make them lightweight enough to fly high in the air and bring the drone up with them. A flight controller and an electronic stability control circuit follow, with the circuit programmed into the flight controller to keep the flying umbrella stabilized as it follows people around. I built stuff took months to make the flying umbrella, and during its pilot flight, it worked. <laughs> However, the second time the flying umbrella was taken to the skies and above the head, the homemade drone power device started drifting off. After taking a day off, the flying umbrella started shaking violently like rustled leaves. The inventor assured his viewers that the flying umbrella had been stabilized and wrapped up the electronics with plastic wrap to protect the technology from getting wet too. While questions surrounding the stability of the flying umbrella still linger, the adventure has made it work so far. During testing, he admitted that it wasn't raining hard, but his homemade device was enough to protect him from the drizzle. He thought the flying umbrella could even withstand harsh conditions, but could be whisked away by strong gusts. While he could control the flying umbrella and force it to come to him, the device itself couldn't do it autonomously. Moving forward, the inventor is looking into adding a camera and programming the flying umbrella so that it follows the user without needing to maneuver it with a controller. Number 1. Ashimo Honda's Ashimo, a humanoid robot, was created in 2000 and is currently displayed at the Mirai Khan Museum in Tokyo. In 2018, Honda announced that it would cease all production and development of Ashima robots to focus on more practical applications using the technology developed throughout its lifespan. Ashimo, pronounced as Ashimo, means also legs and stands 130 centimeters tall and weighs 54 kilograms. It's powered by a rechargeable 51.8 volt lithium ion battery with an operating time of one hour. The robot has a three-dimensional computer processor that controls its movement and can be controlled by a PC, wireless controller, or voice commands. 
In 2018, Honda ceased commercial development of Oshimo, but it will continue to be developed as a research platform and make public appearances. Oshimo, a robot introduced in 2000, has the ability to recognize moving objects, postures, gestures, its environments, sounds, and faces, enabling it to interact with humans. It can detect multiple objects using visual information captured by two camera eyes in its head and determine distance and direction. The all-new Osimo received a full model change, equipped with high-response control system. Hopping on both feet is a major advancement and Osimo has been further developed. Oshimo can also interpret voice commands and human gestures, allowing it to recognize handshakes, waves, or points. It can distinguish between voices and other sounds, allowing it to identify its companions. Oshimo has autonomous navigation capabilities using visual, ground, and ultrasonic sensors to sense obstacles. The robot has traveled around the world, performing in front of international audiences since its introduction in 2000. It made its first public appearance in the United States in 2002 and toured the US and Canada from 2003 to 2005. In 2004, Ashimo was inducted into the Carnegie Mellon Robot Hall of Fame. In 2007, Honda demonstrated new intelligence technologies that enabled multiple Oshima robots to work together, demonstrating their ability to identify and avoid oncoming people, work with another Oshimo, recognize when to recharge his battery, and perform new tasks. Oshimo also conducted the Detroit Symphony Orchestra in a performance of The Impossible Dream in 2008 and made an appearance at the Genoa Science Festival in Italy. And that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next time.